to bless you, which comes from Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 and 15. And it reads, If my people, who are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now my eyes shall be open and my ears attentive unto the prayer that is made in this place. And as I was preaching the message, I could sense that the Lord was saying to me, there's more to it than that. You know, you, you can tell that there's some revelation that is now coming into your spirit that you have to find yourself in a place of prayer and to seek out. And so that is what I've been doing from Wednesday. I have been seeking and searching and trusting the Lord. And so today is like I'm starting over again, but starting over with something new and awesome. Amen? Praise the name of the Lord. So the scriptures make it very clear that unless the Lord is the one who has given Satan permission to touch your stuff, and because of it, life is challenging for you as it was for Job, or unless like the Apostle Paul, you've been chosen by God to suffer many things for his name's sake. Whenever your day changes to night, your prosperity turns to blight, your peace turns to persecution, your harvest turns to famine, and your health gives way to sickness, it is time to examine yourself and pray the prayer of repentance. If everything is all right, you should know how you are living. If everything is all right, and the Lord isn't testing you like he tested Job, or you haven't been called like Paul to suffer many things for his name's sake, according to Second Chronicles chapter 7, verses 14 to 15, then we need to check ourselves to see why is this happening. And so when we examine ourselves, we begin to pray the prayer of repentance. If we've done anything wrong, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Lord, I repent of my transgressions. And once we do that, it makes the way for restoration. Now, in these two verses of scriptures, the Lord requires a number of things from us in the text before he restores our blessings, our anointing, and our position of authority. He starts by saying, if my people, and that refers to the redeemed, even though all of mankind is God's creation, every human being came about because of Adam and Eve, out of the entire human race, God has a people. And his people is called the redeemed or Christians. If the redeemed, if the ecclesia or the called out ones who are called by my name, whom I have called or summoned, or appointed, or chosen, whom I have called by my name, Christians, the righteous, the light of the world. He says, if my people, the redeemed, who are called, who have summoned by my name, the Christians, he says, he will hear from heaven. Now, this is where the revelation comes in. Now, a better translation of the text, Second Chronicles 7, 14 reads, when my people, upon whom my name is invoked, kneel and pray and seek my presence and turn from their wicked courses, then I will listen and forgive their sins and restore all their health. And so I spend a lot of time trying to understand. I understand the word invoke. But what does the Lord mean when he says, when my people upon whom my name is invoked? When God's name is invoked upon you, it means that he has not only chosen you to be a peculiar person and made you his personal possession, it also means that he has blessed you completely or caused his goodness to overflow in your life so that there's no lack in any area of your life. So when you look at the life of Abraham, you can tell that God's name was invoked upon his life because he lacked nothing. The same thing with Job. 
And the same thing with David. David said, my cup overflows. And so when the name of God is invoked upon you, it means that you are a blessed believer, that you are God's property, that you are his personal possession. Besides this, it means that he has also put his favor upon you. God's favor is that which attracts kindness, safety, and prosperity to you as seen with Joseph. Joseph is sold as a slave, but the name of God is invoked upon him. He has favor upon his life. And so it doesn't matter what predicament he's in, it's not as bad as it could have been. God's favor causes people to be kind to him. The same thing with Daniel. He didn't sin. He had to go to Babylon because God needed light in the darkness. But he's a slave. He's a prisoner of war. And so the eunuch comes and says, well, this is how we do it in Babylon. You've got to eat this and drink this and do this. But God's name is invoked upon the life of Daniel. And he says to the eunuch, don't give me that food and that meat to eat and to drink. Just trust me and give us just vegetables and water. And he got favor with the eunuch. And he was allowed to eat that which was not defiled. The same thing with Mordecai. He had favor with the king. And so when God's name, I want you to get it, because God wants you to leave here today understanding um, from what he's revealing, how blessed you are, that when God's name is invoked upon you, firstly, it brings blessing. Blessings that overflow. Blessing that goes beyond. He gives us this day our daily bread. And then his favor attracts kindness to you. It attracts safety to you. It attracts prosperity to you. So when you see people reaching out to go beyond what they should do, to see to it that you are comfortable or that your file is taken care of or that the letter pertaining to you goes out, it is because the name of God has been invoked on you. It's because God has invoked the name. Man can't invoke the name, but God has invoked his name on you. It also means that he is the one who has caused you to be in terms to be alive or to exist and become spiritually alive. So when God's name is invoked upon you, that is the reason why you are spiritually alive. That's the reason why you can say, I sense the presence of God. That's the reason why you can worship in spirit and in truth. Because God has invoked his name upon you. And the moment God did that, you became alive in the spirit. You're not practicing a dead religion where you follow traditions. Today you're going to see many people with the ashes, the cross, you know, on their foreheads uh, with the ashes why the name of God is not invoked upon them and so they follow traditions that they think that would bring them uh, into the presence and the favor of the living God but when God's name is invoked upon you you don't need dead palms from last year to be burned or no incense or no holy water sprinkle on you when God's name uh, is invoked upon your life uh, you have everything that you need that's why the Lord gets upset when we turn away from the living water for broken cisterns. You know, you come to a service like this, and then you leave and say, well, let me go and get some ashes. You're messing with your prosperity. You're messing with the blessing of God that is upon your life because God has invoked his name upon you, and that invocation of his name has done tremendous things for you when my people upon whom my name is invoked kneel and pray because remember God don't hear sinners in the sense that he don't hear evil prayers or that he don't hear prayers I, I was I was looking at this YouTube clipping and there is this re reality star who's into music 
and she's dressing her panty and brazier ready to go on stage and the backup dancers with her and they're holding hands uh, and they're praying i mean when when i see i'm seeing more now what the bible means when it says when the veil is drawn if our gospel is here it's because the god of this world has blinded the eyes of people they're dressed in all just, just a panty and a brazier that's all it is and they're holding hands and they're going, um, Lord Jesus, we ask that we will sing real good tonight and that we will put on a good show and that people will come. And, and they're praying, literally praying like I will pray, Lord, use me, anoint me. May I speak what you want to speak that your people will be blessed. And they're literally praying in Jesus' name, amen. And, and if the show is successful, the devil tells you, you see how God has blessed you in an effort to deceive you that God is prospering you in your wickedness. And so God does not hear the prayers of sinner. God hears every prayer of repentance. When you are a sinner and you come to God, that's how I got saved. It started as a sinner, but it was a prayer of repentance. And the moment you repent and you are sincere, you become the people of God. So this is primarily to the redeemed. If my people who are called by my name has been doing something wrong, has been missing the mark for weeks, for hours, for days, for months, or a couple years, will humble themselves and pray, he says, I'm going to hear because I invoke my name upon you. A literal translation reads, and the people of God who call out my name upon them. Now, the first translation says, upon whom my name is invoked. So that this translation implies that God has put his name upon you. A literal translation now of the Septuagint says, and the people who call out my name upon them. So now, you are calling God's name upon you. God has invoked his name upon you. But now you are calling out his name upon you. When we call out God's name upon us, we are pronouncing the manifestation of the meaning of his name upon us. In other words, in the natural, sometimes we call the distinguished name of our church. Oh, where do you go to church? I go to faith evangelistic ministry. Oh, my God, that's a big church. That's a great church. You know, I understand the power of God there is awesome. You're calling out that name upon you. Sometimes we call the name of the college that we went to or, or the job because it adds value to us and to what we do. So when you say, I'm evangelist Heather Lashley, and then the person said, where you go to church? He said, you know, there's that little church there between the subway and, and the, 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 um, the bodega. Oh, there's where you go. You see, it doesn't have any value. But when you say, I go to Brooklyn Tab, oh my gosh, you would have to be some kind of evangelist because the bigger the house, the bigger the church, the grander the college, it adds value to you. So now people want to pay you attention. And so when you call the name of God upon you, you are pronouncing the manifestation of the meaning of his name upon you. Because remember, every name of God has a meaning. It is not like some of our names that are just songs we put together, Shaquika. You see, that's all it means, Shaquika. It has no meaning. And so when you call out the name Jehovah to bear upon you, I want you to get it, because this is what we are going to do today. When you call out the name Jehovah to bear upon you, which means the good Lord or the God of loving kindness, you are calling the loving kindness of God or the graciousness of God upon you, which he gives to us through people who receive his heart for us. So when you are praying and you bow down and you say, Oh, Jehovah to bear. I'm calling upon you right now. You are calling the goodness of God, the loving kindness to come upon you because it says, and the people who call out my name upon them. So when you call his name, 
You are, and you know what you are doing. You are calling forth the manifestation of the name of who God is, the goodness. He is the good Lord. So you're asking God to be good to you. When we call the name Jesus upon us, you are calling who Jesus is and what he does. Let's suppose they said the train is running off the track. And you go, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. If my people who call out my name upon them, when you go, Jesus, 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 what you're actually doing is asking him to save you because his name shall be called Jesus, for he shall save his people. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because you have to get it to get what God is going to do today. You're in trouble. And you begin to say, Jesus, Jesus. This is a, another level of knowledge that God has given to us to make our praise and our relationship with them more effective and more powerful. And so when we say Jesus, we, we, in the past, we said Jesus because he was the one we were calling upon. So we said Jesus because we are calling upon Jesus and not the Father or not the Holy Spirit. Because if we wanted to call upon the Father, we would say Father or the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. But we said Jesus. Now the Lord is saying to us that when we call upon the name Jesus, even though he's a person and we are reaching forward towards that person, we are also calling the manifestation of his name. His name means he shall save. Did you get that? Did you get it? What's distracting you? Did you get that? You're in trouble. You're in a building and it's burning and you don't know how to get out. In the past, you would call on Jesus, the person to come. You're still doing that, but now God is adding to that. When you say Jesus, his name means, if my people who invoke my name, who call my name upon them. When you say Jesus, now you're saying, save me, save me, because that is what his name means. So when my people who call out my name upon them, when you call his name, the Bible tells us in Psalm 54 verse 4, Surely God is my help. The Lord is the one who sustains me. So Elijah received God's loving kindness through the widow of Zarephath. When the widow turned up for Elijah, that was God who came as Elohim Azar, the Lord, my helper. And so when you are praying and you call out God's name upon you and you say, Elohim Azar, you are saying, God, I'm receiving your help because he's the Lord, my helper. When my people call out my name upon them. So Elohim Azar, when you call him by his name Elohim Azar, you are calling forth the help that you need upon your life. Elisha also received help through the Shulamite woman. Another name of God is El Imuna, and it means the strong one who is faithful. Like I said earlier, God was faithful to Abraham, he gave him the son of the promise. And so in your praying, you say, oh, Elimuna, I need you for whatever. I'm sorry you're saying, God, I want you. I'm calling forth your faithfulness upon me. I'm calling forth your faithfulness. When my people who call my name upon them, I'm calling your faithfulness upon my life. And so God wants us to get to the place, not to just say, well, this is a Hebrew name for God, and this is what it means, and we learn it, and we have it in our heads. When you call out God's name upon you, when you are hungry, and you are saying Jehovah Jireh, you are calling forth your food, you are calling forth your water, you are calling forth your metro card, you are calling forth, because the, the, the text says, the literal translation says, and the people who call out my name upon them. He says, I will hear and I will answer. And so you are calling God's name upon you based on what you need God to do for you. When you say Eli Meh, it means the God who abounds in truth. You know that God doesn't lie. 
You may be saying, oh, Lord Jesus, how long? How much longer do I have to wait? I have been trusting you for a very long time. But when you know he's a God of truth, in other words, you're releasing the truth of God upon you. Then there's another name for God. It's called Erakum, the merciful God. When my people who call out my name upon them, when you've missed the march so far and so long, and you need mercy. You call him by his name. And whatever name of God you call, you are releasing that manifestation of God upon your life. And the people who call out my name upon them. I'm going to call some names of God. Because I didn't plan to do this, but this is what the Lord asked me to do today as I was here doing the worship. And I'm going to say what the name of the Lord means. And if that name applies to your situation, I want you to stand. Amen? Yeshua Thalatai, the Lord, our salvation. Jehovah Palatai, our deliverer. Jehovah Elion, the Lord, the blesser. Jehovah Tiskanu, the Lord, our righteousness. Jehovah Makadishkam, the Lord, our sanctification. Emmanuel, God with us, revealed in us. Like I said, when I call a name and it relates to your situation, I think someone should have been standing at Jehovah Palatai, our deliverer. Jehovah El Elyon, the Lord, the blesser. Emmanuel, God with us, revealed in us. Jehovah Maganinu, the Lord, our defense. Jehovah Selyai, the Lord, my rock. Jehovah Mach Machalenu, God, my refuge. Jehovah Matsor, the Lord, my fortress. Jehovah Mecca, the Lord that smites. Jehovah Maoz, the Lord, my strength. Elohim, you call, God most able. Sether, my hiding place. Moaz, you are my stronghold. Matsor, fortress or bulwark. Can you remember which name you stood up to? Or you want me to, to go to it quickly again? Quickly again. Yeshua Thalatai, the Lord, our salvation. Jehovah Palatai, the Lord, my deliverer. Jehovah El Elyon, the Lord, the blesser. Jehovah Tiskanu, the Lord, our righteousness. Jehovah Makadishkam, the Lord, our sanctification. Emmanuel, God with us, revealing us. If you can't even remember the Hebrew name, once you speak it in English, God knows what you're talking about. Jehovah Maganinu, the Lord, our defense. Jehovah Selyai, the Lord, my rock. Jehovah Macheslanu, God, my refuge. Jehovah Matsor, the Lord, my fortress. Jehovah Mecca, the Lord that smites. Jehovah Meozi, the Lord my strength. Elohim, your call, God most able. Sether, hide in place. Moaz, you are my stronghold. Matsor, fortress or bulwark. Once you have your name, once you have your name, Jehovah, God most able, your call. Once you have your name now, Brother Alex, number seven softly. Once you have your name, we are going to begin to pray, and I want you to call that name upon yourself. Whether you remember the Hebrew or not, I want you to call that name upon yourself because what God is going to do, he's going to manifest in your behalf based on the name that you have chosen. If you have more than one name, you go right ahead and you do that. Father, in the name of Jesus, and I'll, I'll call the names again as we are praying. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, your word declares, and the people who call out my name upon them and bend the knee and pray and seek my presence and turn from their wicked path, I will hear from high and forgive their sin and mend their soul. 
And so, Lord, we call out your name upon our lives. We call out your name, Yeshua Thalatai, the Lord our salvation. We call out your name, Jehovah Palatai, the Lord our deliverer. Because when we call your name, it's a manifestation of who you are and what you will do for us. We call out your name, Jehovah El Elyon, the Lord the Blesser, Jehovah Tiskanu, the Lord our righteousness, Jehovah Makadishkam, the Lord our sanctification. Father, we call your name upon us. You have already invoked your name of blessing and favor and spiritual life upon us uh, but today we invoke your name we call it uh, upon us in the name uh, of jesus christ the son of the living god uh, we invoke the name uh, we call your name emmanuel uh, God with us, uh, revealing us. Uh, you are Jehovah Maganinu, uh, the Lord our defense. Uh, you're going to defend us in trouble, uh, in persecution. Uh, whatever man may seek to do to us, uh, Lord, we uh, call your name upon us today in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, you are Jehovah Selyai, uh, the Lord our rock. Uh, Lord God, we call your name. Uh, you are our rock. Uh, our strength, our fortress, uh, it is on you where we stand. Uh, all other ground uh, is sinking sand. Uh, we call the name uh, of Elohim Ashalenu. Uh, God, uh, my refuge, uh, I have some place uh, that I can run and hide. Uh, you are our seat, uh, our hiding place. Uh, we call the name uh, of the Lord upon us. Uh, we call the name of Jesus uh, for he shall save us uh, out of every trouble, uh, out of every circumstance, uh, out of every predicament. Uh, we call the name uh, of the Lord upon us, uh, whatever his name means. Uh, that is exactly what he's going to give to us. Uh, whatever his name means, uh, that is exactly uh, what he's going to do for us. Uh, we call the name Jehovah Maozi, uh, the Lord our strength upon us. Uh, we are not going to be weak. Uh, our strength uh, is not going to fail us uh, in the day of adversity. Uh, but we call uh, his name upon us. Uh, Call him by his name. Uh, and when you call his name, uh, that is exactly uh, what is going to happen for you. Uh, he's going to give you strength. Uh, he's going to reveal himself to you. Uh, he's going to bless you. Uh, he's going to deliver you. Uh, Jehovah Mecca, we call your name upon us uh, because you're going to smite our enemies. Uh, the enemy of sickness. Uh, the enemy of debt. Uh, the enemy mighty God. Uh, of hunger and nakedness uh, every enemy that you know uh, visible and invisible uh, we call uh, the name uh, of Jehovah Mecca the Lord that smites uh, that will smite the enemy uh, every drought uh, and every famine uh, the enemy of danger uh, all the threats uh, that has been hurled at you uh, we call your name upon us we call it today, God. We call it to you. Hallelujah. 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 We call the name. Uh, come on and call the name of God upon you. Uh, call his name upon you. Call God's name upon you. Uh, if you don't know a Hebrew name, uh, call him by the name uh, that you want him to reveal uh, himself to you in the name of Jesus. Uh, he's Elohim Azar. Uh, he's God your help. Uh, he's Jehovah Tobay. He's the good God. Call the name uh, of my people uh, who call my name. Uh, when you call God by his name, uh, you're asking God to be good to me. Uh, you're asking God to help me. Uh, God, you are my strength. Uh, if my people uh, who are 
call by my name, uh, when you call him by the name Jehovah, when you call him by the name Yahweh, you are saying, God, uh, I want you to do what you plan to do for me. Uh, you are the I am that I am. Uh, I will be who you want me to be. Uh, I will do what you want me to do. Uh, you must not leave this sanctuary today without uh, calling the name uh, of God upon your life. Uh, don't go back to your jobs. Uh, and to your homes uh, and to your churches uh, without knowing uh, that you have called uh, God's name upon your life. Uh, when you call him El Rakum, uh, you are saying the mercy of God uh, is upon me uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, when you call him El Imun, uh, you are saying the faithfulness uh, of God is upon me. Uh, when you call him Elimeth, uh, you are saying uh, the truth of God uh, is upon me. Come on and call uh, God's name upon you. Uh, call God's name upon you. Uh, you need God's name to rest upon you. Uh, there are people out there with dead ashes uh, upon their lives uh, that can do nothing. Uh, but when you call God's name, uh, come on Zion, uh, if my people uh, who call my name upon them, uh, call upon on me uh, he said I will hear I will hear I will hear I will hear I will heal I will provide I will deliver I will make a way out of nowhere thank you Jesus oh call his name call his name upon your children call his name upon your spouse Call his name upon your family. Call his name. Call his name. He's El Shaddai, the God that is more than enough. Call his name upon you. That the overflow, the overflow anointing, the overflow of blessings will come upon you. And my people who call my name upon them, call his name. Hallelujah. That's the reason that we've all gathered here tonight. Just because. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, don't leave unless you know that you've called his name upon you. Don't leave unless you know, hallelujah, that the Lord you serve, uh, the great and mighty God, uh, he's with you to bless you and to help you. Father, we've called your name. We've called your name. We've called your name. Tina has called your name. Andrea has called your name. Peter has called your name. Glory. Sister Gloria, her company has called your name. Evangelist Santiago, Sister Sharon, all of you that I'm looking upon that I really don't know your name. We've called your name. My brother that is leaving, he's called your name upon his life. Every name, whatever you need. Jehovah Rapha, he's still healer. Call his name. Once you call his name upon you, you're calling forth the blessings of God, all the goodness, all the prosperity, every provision that you need. You know, a woman wears a hat and a man's hair is covering her. But if you can just have the name of God upon you as a hat, as a talit, as a covering, as a, a chapel cat, or whatever you want to call it, in the name of Jesus Christ, Oh God, uh, we call your name upon us today uh, and we thank you for blessing us. Uh, I call the name of God uh, upon this offering, uh, Jehovah Jireh, the God that is more than enough. Uh, I call your name uh, upon El Shaddai uh, in the name of Jesus. I call the name uh, of the Lord upon the guests of your people uh, and I thank you for blessing Lord. Uh, I thank you for blessing God. I thank you for making a way out of nowhere. I thank you, hallelujah. You must know today, as you leave this sanctuary, that you have invoked God's name upon your life in the name of Jesus. And whatever you call God today, that is what the Lord says you will see transpire in your life. Whatever deliverance, whatever peace, if you call the name of Shalom, Shalom, shalom upon you. Uh, peace will be your portion uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, thank you, God, for being our deliverer, our provider, our peace, uh, our salvation, uh, our help, and our God. Uh, for there is absolutely none uh, like you. Uh, may the Lord bless you and keep you. Elhanan, the gracious God, 
May he cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and continue to give you peace, success, and prosperity, both now and forevermore. For I invoke the name of Jehovah El Elyon, the Lord, the blesser upon your life today. My people, I call upon the name of Jehovah El Elyon, the Lord, the blesser upon you. And I decree and declare that you are blessing your going out and in your coming in, in your uprising and your down sitting. The Lord has blessed you today in Jesus' name. God bless you. See you next Wednesday with your prayer requests. Invite your friends. Spread the news.